Hello, I'm James Kumar. I'm Senior Vice President for Products at DDN. Thank you for joining this presentation where we're going to be talking mainly about our work alongside NVIDIA and Deloitte to bring better, more optimal solutions for large-scale AI. First, we'll be taking a look at the history of DDN, who is DDN as a company. Uh, then we're going to go in a bit more detail in about what we've done with NVIDIA over the past three plus years for specific features and innovations and optimizations for AI infrastructures. Uh, we're going to take a look at the pitfalls of AI and where we see customers and organizations have challenges traditionally in moving from POC into production. Um, then we're going to go and have a chat with our friends at Deloitte, a little interview um, towards the end of the presentation. So uh, let's get started. So who is DDN? Well, we're a company that's been developing, implementing and supporting at scale storage and data management solutions for over 20 years. We're an engineering focused company with a global presence. Engineers and field staff across all major continents around the world. We now have over 11,000 customers and these customers can be found in traditional commercial enterprise, in governments, academia, and in major commercial and academic research institutes. To set the scene for the rest of the presentation, uh, let's take a look at some of the pitfalls and challenges of implementing AI at the kind of scales that, that we see. Um, often an organization will start with a POC um, and then, you know, assuming that's successful, they will then move that into production. And often they will use storage that they know and love, um, storage that's used traditionally in that enterprise uh, as NAS or for serving kind of more standard IT workloads. And that's when we start to see the issues that I'll, I'll talk about. Uh, typically when you start getting um, AI running at scale, and when I say scale, that's whenever you're really using these sort of large file format, um, unstructured data, things like video, um, real-time image analysis, uh, audio and NLP, all those things can often require petabytes or tens of petabytes or even hundreds of petabytes of data. And then the performance requirements for pushing that data through the AI machine and other areas of the end-to-end -end AI workflow become challenging. And in particular, they become challenging for anything that's using NFS protocols. Typically, the NFS protocol cannot deliver the right performance into the applications that is required. And that's where DDN does things a bit differently. So anyway, let's take a look at the sort of end-to-end -end customer journey that ends in um, high risk or even failure for customers moving into AI. The first thing that a customer will often see is end users, data scientists, um, complaining that their jobs are running slow. And the data scientists, um, you know, re you really want them to innovate. All that investment in the infrastructure, investment in acquiring the data, investment in the data scientists and the training as well, um, means that they are extremely important um, people in your organization and you really want to help them innovate as well because a lot of innovation means um, a lot of opportunities for success. And when a, a user complains that the storage is slow, um, typically it's framed like that, um, it's typically not necessarily because the storage is slow. It's typically because the data path between application and storage isn't a strong one. And this is kind of referring back to NFS. Um, great for your standard IT, and not so great when you want to push very high, high data volumes into these AI frameworks, uh, or even checkpoint these applications, which we'll come back to. So the data movement built on networks, on the software, on the AI frameworks, and the protocols um, 
like NFS, often isn't designed for these kind of uh, large-scale data movements. The next thing that we see is intermittent failures. Um, could it be network? Could it be storage? All we see is small outages or even large outages, or maybe just the service level isn't quite where it needs to be. And the customers then need expertise to help them get over whatever challenge it is. And at, well, the point is that at scale, different things happen than what happens in standard enterprise IT. And that's because of two things. A, literally the scales are larger, um, the performance is higher. And so with the sheer volume of devices and network ports, etc., it's more common for hardware failures to occur. But a little bit more subtly, when the pressure is always on pushing data across this infrastructure into applications across a large set of systems, you tend to see these corner cases more often than uh, than not. Um, and often enterprise storage really won't be subject to that in its standard working life. Whereas, you know, if you have a DDN storage system, um, it's really designed to cope with the worst you can throw at it in terms of high pressure data. And so these corner cases are things like, you know, you might discover bottlenecks in the network which would otherwise remain um, uncovered because you're pushing that data through all these switch ports, often concentrated into storage, and that's when you really see these issues. So many things happen which can destabilize um, the productivity of the entire organization just because the data platform isn't coping with the pressures of AI at scale. Then the third part I want to mention is about siloization. Um, it's a long recognized problem, of course. We have many companies saying, de-silo your data. And I think we all know that there's good reason for that. It allows us to remove some of the boundaries which stop group A from essentially accessing the data of group B. Um, and, you know, obviously that's often not wanted, uh, but sometimes, particularly with AI, organizations are gradually understanding what the impact of AI can be if, they, if only they could access a larger volume of their company's valuable data. But if it's locked up in silos, that becomes very difficult. And what you want to do is de-silo it, so it's a, a single um, physical system with logical boundaries which are very secure, which you can move according to the business demand. Now, often companies talk about scale, um, and they can scale to some extent, but often when we're talking about unstructured data, really the scalability requirements are beyond um, what a standard enterprise storage organization would consider scale. So to give you an idea, um, some of our customers, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, in autonomous driving, um, literally get to very close to an exabyte of storage. That's approaching some of the largest storage systems in the world. And that's where, you know, even storage systems that claim to be scalable start to break down. Often they're doing things like the back-end networks become complicated. They often have these rather um, sophisticated back-end networks to cope with the scale-out infrastructure. Um, and sometimes it's these corner cases around, you know, uh, weird things happen at scale and they don't have the internal software mechanics to deal with those things um, when the, the number of devices gets very large. So, desiloization is key. It requires two things primarily. One, sheer scalability. And DDN delivers that, as we'll see in terms of our parallel file system. Uh, and the second thing is it needs to have a robust method for managing the security when these various groups are essentially sharing the same physical storage layer. And you want to be able to move those boundaries relatively easy to allow very secure access to different tenants on the storage system as it scales to very, very high volumes. And then finally, let's talk about the end result. The end result is all this investment in infrastructure and in GPUs, in understanding and implementing the AI systems, gathering that data in the first place can be very expensive. And of course, building the team, the data scientists in particular, is, is very expensive. And, you know, if you start with the wrong data platform, despite all the other good choices you make, you could end up um, with the whole project at risk just because um, an enterprise storage platform typically will not cope with the, the performance needs and scale needs of AI at scale, particularly for 
programs that are you know potentially successful and therefore the data volumes get very high so now let's see how ddn started working with nvidia about three years ago implementing these data systems at scale literally for the largest ai supercomputers in the world to resolve all of these issues build in greater efficiencies and really de-risk de the whole path to production ai I'm a part of the team that helps to design, build, and administer the deep learning supercomputers at NVIDIA. Selene is a supercomputer that we have at NVIDIA, which is used primarily for our own uh, AI application work. For our applied deep learning research team is natural language processing, uh, large-scale model training and development. There's a few different reasons why we chose to go with DDN storage technology for Selene. The first is the integration of the AI400X platform with InfiniBand technology. InfiniBand is used heavily throughout Selene, so having a solution that seamlessly integrated into that fabric without additional changes was a big win for us. The second reason was sustaining the level of performance that we needed for our applications. When designing Selene, we set out with a goal to have a data ingest rate from our storage of one terabyte per second. Using the AI400X platform allowed us to reach that level of performance comfortably and realize it for real applications. Having the storage technology that can provide the appropriate amount of bandwidth, both for reads and for writes, is critical to make sure that we maintain that level of efficiency. We felt that the DDN storage technology was the right fit for this type of application. And the final reason why we went with DDN storage is the software piece, which is very critical. DDN Exascalar software is based on the Luster storage technology, which is a commonly used storage technology for providing parallel file systems and high bandwidth storage throughout HPC centers. Our experience working with the DDN team has been great. We leverage them for the enterprise support portion. We have uptime requirements that we need to keep for our users who are using the cluster for important work. So being able to leverage the DDN enterprise support whenever issues do arise, especially at the scale that we run at, is great knowing that I can pick up the phone and call a friend at DDN and get their support. I would say to anybody who is thinking about using DDN that they would be getting a engineering partner and a team that knows how to support customers that have such a large scale like we do at Selene. And they have the ability to continue to innovate and provide new solutions for improving performance of future AI applications. I think it's been a great process. The NVIDIA Selene system has been at the center of our collaboration with NVIDIA um, for two to three years now. We've been working on optimizing our systems together so that the storage, the network, the compute, the AI applications, the GPUs um, kind of work in tandem in a well-balanced manner. And our reference architectures, if you look on NVIDIA's website or DDN's website indeed, you'll see comprehensive reference architectures, which are essentially the results of that work. We built in new features and strong optimizations across our whole storage software stack to integrate with the rest of the AI ecosystem. And the experience and all the outputs of this work is packed into these reference architectures and also goes into our professional services to help customers get to production faster and once they're in production, stay efficient and keep that those data scientists happy and those workloads moving with the best performance. So what exactly does that mean? What have we really done? Um, now we're going to take a look through um, the various um, areas of the system where we've made those optimizations and give you a brief sort of explanation about exactly um, where the optimizations and features have been built. So firstly, let's use this little subset of NVIDIA Selene um, as shown in this picture to demonstrate some of the features. So inside the Selene system, there is the DGX systems from NVIDIA. Current generation is A100, moving on soon. Um, there's also Mellanox InfiniBand and Ethernet networking. Um, we're going to talk about InfiniBand primarily here. 
and there's DDN AI storage. And you'll see an example right here uh, in the center of the rack are two DDN AI 400 NVX 2s, so second generation of this platform, very, very performant um, with, as say, a big parallel file system software infrastructure built right into those appliances. So the first thing we do is accelerate how fast the data can be brought in to the environment. So obviously, the first challenge before you even start doing any uh, deep learning or inference is to bring data into the system. And that can be a challenge in of itself. DDN leads the market on this metric alone um, with over 65 gigabytes per second um, into each one of those systems you see here. So in this picture, we have four of those systems, and so it's four times 65. Um, so around 260 gigabytes a second. That is absolutely market-leading um, ingest performance into the system. Uh, so roughly for that 2U platform, that's the equivalent of about 130 movies per second being ingested. Um, and it scales. So as we scale to 1, 2, 4, NVIDIA has more than 40 of these systems, we get linear scaling in that ingest performance. Now, think about storage. This ingest bringing data in is, from the storage perspective, a write challenge. Often, storage systems are poor on writes, and they advertise the read, but the writes are, are less good. DDN's pretty even on that, so we have very good write performance. And that's not only important for this ingest phase, um, it's also important for the deep learning phase. There's a process whereby you want to essentially stop the applications and then restart them for various reasons. Um, as, they get, as the data models get bigger, it becomes a bigger requirement. And when you stop and start, you need to take the application and what's in the memory and move it into the storage. And again, that's a tough write challenge that we do particularly well with. So that's area one. And a little bit more com complicated than that is we want to push the data from our storage systems into these GPUs. And there's many aspects involved there. To get into a little bit of detail, we need to optimize that data path between the application and the storage file system. We've worked on many different innovations there. Um, the innovations start with the AI frameworks themselves, the software, and how they're trying to read the data. We then optimize for the GPUs themselves. We optimize for the GPU systems, and we optimize for the networks, as well as, of course, at the storage end. And we're going to take a look at what those optimizations really are. Firstly, everything is fully parallel. DDN has a parallel file system. And we call that a truly parallel file system because in many ways it's more parallel than other parallel file systems. In particular, um, we call a parallel file system um, that name because the client, the, this, the, the software running inside the GPU systems close to the applications, has a degree of intelligence which essentially lets the whole thing perform and scale. So firstly, fully parallel data. Every application, every application thread is going to be talking in parallel to all the storage at any point in time, more effectively and efficiently than anything based upon NFS, whatever smarts there is inside the NFS methodology. Secondly, we're RDMA. So RDMA is a term often used um, in high-performance computing and AI circles, remote direct memory access. But all it means is that the system is more efficient in moving data from A to B between computers. In this case, we go a little bit further. Um, we've integrated with something called NVIDIA GPU Direct Storage, and that means we can move the data from our storage systems into the GPU's memory and bypass the CPU, bypass lots of data copies, which make this, the whole process less efficient. And we've done that in conjunction with NVIDIA, and that was completed maybe two years ago. So this GPU direct storage, what does it do? It allows us to make more efficient the, the data movement. And typically, we can see 50% um, throughput improvements by using GPU direct storage. For the customers, it's very easy. It's a simple switch, switch it on, and it's enabled, switch it off, and it's disabled. And of course, this is very popular with customers. And of course, the end users really have no knowledge of this. All they know is that things go faster. 
We're also DGX aware, and that means a lot of things actually, it gets quite sophisticated. But if you imagine the DGX A100, for example, the architecture of that compute system includes GPUs, it includes CPUs, and it includes many different uh, Mellanox based um, adapters to push that data out into the network. And that means there's all sorts of complexities in there in terms of data movements. There's many paths the data can take through that system. And our DGX aware clients essentially make the most of the infrastructure and make sure the data goes through the most optimal path on its route to the application or even on its route out of the application for a, a checkpoint operation, let's say. So our client quite uniquely takes into account the GPU, the CPU, and the network architecture of those systems to get the most data through the system for the least amount of hardware. And we've also implemented, as I said, really at the AI framework level. So regardless of the, the hardware, the software is, of course, the thing that's making the requests for data. And the way the software makes those requests is very important because some storage systems really don't deal with that IO pattern and IO method very well. We've been optimizing that for a long time. And so the way we can deliver data into the AI frameworks really exceeds what we can get with the vast majority of file systems. So the protocol is called MMAP and it's a memory map operation. Um, but essentially we remove the bottlenecks of that protocol and that means applications go fast. They benefit from the RDMA, they benefit from the parallelism and they benefit from this optimization we've done at the DGX level as well as optimizing the pro protocol level. So these different layers of optimization is really what you get to see the, the speed and performance you get from a DDN system. And so this NVIDIA Selene system has been extremely successful. NVIDIA has been running a wide range of AI challenges and working with DDN to build in optimizations for each one of those whilst working at very large scale. As I said, we've taken the outputs of these and we keep updating this in the form of our reference architectures for both modest scale systems called pods and these super pods, these very large scale systems. Um, and you can go and download it from ddn.com or from NVIDIA. The Cambridge One system is one of NVIDIA's several different AI supercomputers that we use for developing software. Uh, NVIDIA invests billions of dollars a year in developing our AI and high-performance computing technology. Cambridge One is the fastest AI supercomputer in the UK. It's an example of our DGX SuperPod architecture. It brings together 80 of our DGX A100 systems. All our previous supercomputers had been used by NVIDIA engineers. When we built Cambridge One, we decided to choose UK medical partners because of the amazing medical research being done there. A lot of people don't understand why such big supercomputers are used for life sciences research. You think of life sciences as a bunch of researchers in a lab with test tubes. Today, a genome sequencer can sequence not one genome, but many genomes at a time with relatively low cost equipment. That data is being used as the inputs to AI, artificial intelligence, and is turning huge amounts of data into knowledge. In order to do this, one, you require a tremendous amount of mathematical calculations on the data, hence all the GPUs. But the other thing is, is the masses of data. You need to move the data from the storage through the network and get it to where the processing is done. And then you need to move it back again. Most supercomputers are custom built. The new breed of AI customers doesn't have experience building supercomputers. So we built one as a turnkey product. And that's where we actually started working with DDN. There are many important considerations when designing the world's most powerful AI systems. Storage is one that's often overlooked. As the data models get bigger and bigger, and the computation becomes bigger and bigger, you need more and more data. And it's not just about moving that data, it's about moving the data at the same time. The researchers, however, they don't want to be worried about the storage. They want their AI models, their data to be stored just as easily as an email is stored when you send it over the internet. In these large AI systems, hardware capabilities are just the start. The real differentiator is DDN's use of a parallel file system. 
And that's why every DGX SuperPod we've shipped has come with DDN storage. I never hesitate to recommend DDN. I know that if DDN can meet the demands of the DGX SuperPod, they can meet any of our customers' requirements. What I love about DDN, they're not new to high performance. They're the de facto name in high performance computing storage. And now by working with us, our DGX SuperPod, they're the de facto name for AI storage in high performance environments. Thanks very much to Mark Hamilton there, uh, NVIDIA's Vice President of Solutions Architecture and Engineering. So far in this presentation, we've heard about the challenges organizations face when building data flat platforms for scalable AI. And some of the things DDN has done, much in close collaboration with NVIDIA to resolve those challenges. We've looked at just two of the 20 plus SuperPod implementations and how they've leveraged DDN to gain business success. De-risking the data platform through DDN software and expertise and accelerating workloads and keeping the scale problem under control. But organizations moving into AI want more than technology. They want to focus on their business goals and leverage their data through AI without having to become experts. I talked with my colleague at Deloitte just about this and about how Deloitte and DDN, along with NVIDIA as well, work together to bring a complete business-ready AI service to autonomous driving development, where we see some of the greatest challenges in performance and scale for data. Let's have a listen to that interview with Deloitte. Right, hi there, Prasad. Uh, many thanks for joining us in this presentation for GTC. Um, so I've already half introduced um, this little interview section, but I haven't introduced you. So please tell us what your role is and also tell us a little bit more about Deloitte. Yeah, James, uh, great to be here. Uh, the, the role that I have at Deloitte is uh, one of uh, uh, the technical lead uh, and chief architect for our connected an autonomous uh, vehicle uh, business unit. It's uh, a nascent uh, business that we started in uh, Deloitte about a year ago. Uh, and uh, uh, it's an exciting place to be, which I'm sure we'll talk about some more. Well, let's talk a bit more about that then. Let's talk about autonomous driving. So I know that you've had a collaboration with NVIDIA for about a year. Before we talk about that, maybe just paint the picture of the challenges you see in autonomous. Yeah, autonomous is 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 uh, so. Just stepping back, you know, the 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 race to autonomy, uh, it, it's happening across the globe and across twenty five large OEMs, uh, and and uh, it's it's driving a massive uh, R and D uh, in uh, uh, spend uh, to to get there first, all right? And and uh, in many ways, it's uh, a is going to fundamentally change and transform our society as as we know it. Um, and it's uh, if you look at the overall spend, it's about a forty five percent CAGR uh, through twenty twenty eight to about eight hundred billion dollars uh, of R and D spend just to realize uh, autonomy. And how does all those how do those challenges map back to? data volumes uh, and um, the amount of data that these autonomous development organizations need to be handling? Yeah, great question, uh, James. I mean, uh, this whole uh, enablement of, of uh, level three hands-off uh, driving uh, is happening through a virtual driver, uh, which is uh, these deep neural nets. There's about 30 uh, deep neural nets that uh, enable perce perception, control, and execution uh, of the vehicle. Uh, and, and to train these models uh, so that they are actually uh, executing uh, uh, to what the ground truth is, uh, is uh, uh, a very uh, data intensive exercise. Uh, you're literally collecting uh, uh, data with these fleet cars on a daily basis. Uh, and, and, and training these models uh, on a 24 by 7 basis. Uh, so to give you a sense of magnitude uh, for uh, 
an OEM to achieve level three autonomy, we are talking about 200 petabytes of, of data uh, in the cloud. Uh, you're talking about uh, collecting uh, 1.7 to two petabytes of data a day in these fleet cars. There's about 20 to 30 fleet cars that are going around collecting uh, data with uh, different uh, image scenarios uh, that uh, reflect what uh, the uh, actual autonomous vehicle has to navigate mm -hmm. and uh, ensuring we capture all the mainstream use cases, also as the also the edge corner cases uh, with synthetic data, which is a new technology that's coming in and ring that through the uh, DNN training process uh, uh, has, has one word behind, about, behind it, which is massive, massive amounts of data, yeah. right? Uh, so, uh, yeah. And then, so you're, you're a professional services and consultancy organization. So what, give me some examples of the services you're layering upon NVIDIA's hardware and middleware and software stack um, for the benefit of the organization. So why would an organization choose a, a Deloitte service on top of what NVIDIA can provide them? Yeah, that's a very fair question. Uh, uh, to, to actually earn our stripes uh, as a, a player in this space, uh, we've had, basically doubled down uh, and said, we're going to uh, 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 practice our preach or eat our own dog food. Mm. Uh, and, and we've invested heavily in uh, uh, what we call an AI center of excellence, uh, where uh, we have got a, a pretty extensive uh, uh, NVIDIA uh, GPU compute cluster that is uh, an instantiation of how we built uh, our offerings, right? So we have four specific offerings. Uh, one is, uh, as you might uh, imagine, infrastructure as a service built on NVIDIA GPU infrastructure. This is the DGX systems. Uh, and, and we actually have showcased that uh, in our own uh, data center uh, in Deloitte. Uh, on top of that, so we have infrastructure as a service that we can enable customers with as an out-of-the-box experience where they don't have to go deal with the care about of how do I set up the infrastructure, how do I run it, how do I monitor it and support it. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have uh, uh, the conversation we just started with, which is data management. Mm -hmm. Collecting this data, uh, you know, uh, filtering the data for uh, data quality issues, organizing and, and, and ensuring that you can easily access the data with a metadata catalog and so on and so forth, and curating and labeling the data is very time consuming. And, and, and uh, frankly, the uh, data scientists uh, just wishes that all this data was just available for them yeah. to run training. Uh, and so we, we want to handle this as a service for them to improve their productivity by uh, a significant percent. Uh, and then the uh, MLOps as a service, the whole model management, I mean, when you're at level three autonomy, you're running about 50 parallel experiments a day uh, and, and you have different version controls and, and you're iterating these models. So how do you make sure that that experience for the the scientists in terms of visualizing the output and advising what the next modeling run should be uh, has to be pretty uh, productive and seamless and, and intelligent, if you will. Uh, and so uh, we are enabling that as a service as well. And the last piece is uh, I mentioned uh, synthetic data, right? Uh, when you get to these yeah. edge cases, uh, you, you have to, to essentially rely on synthetic data generation. So we, we are enabling synthetic data as a service as well. Uh, so these are four capabilities that we have today. And in 2022 or FY23 for Deloitte, uh, we are focused on simulation as a service, which is the validation side. So year one has been more on the dev and uh, testing pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, year two is, is now on the validation side of the house where we want to enable an out of the box experience for both software in the loop validation as well as hardware in the loop validation. So when did you come across DDN and how does DDN fit into all this stuff? <laughs> yeah, so well, DDN is, is a, a reputed uh, high performance uh, uh, data storage uh, uh, player out there. Uh, and uh, as we are looking at uh, deploying uh, the uh, overall infrastructure, especially on infrastructure as a service uh, and data management as a service, uh, DDN's role in terms of enabling high performance uh, I.O. Uh, as a data store uh, at different levels of data tiering uh, uh, is, 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 I would say, one of the top two uh, choices for players in the space. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, their NVMe drives, uh, their uh, uh, caching capability, their data migration movers. Uh, they have a, a pretty sophisticated set of uh, capabilities that address not only the performance issue, but the cost issue, and also the migration issue for customers who may want to move from the cloud to the on-prem environment. And I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about them. Uh, I've been in the storage industry myself for many, many years and know them very well and have a lot of respect All for right. them. Yeah, cool. Right, thanks, Prasad. And thanks to Deloitte for sharing with us the details of how they are helping DDN and NVIDIA bring business-ready solutions to customers so that customers can um, move into deploying AI for autonomous driving um, with even lower risk and in a way that satisfies their business needs. Now, before we finish, uh, I want to take you through just a few uh, insights into how we see the challenges of implementing AI at scale changing over the next few years and really why using DDN and DDN software technology in parallel file systems and their capabilities are going to become ever more important as we step through the next few years. Firstly, it probably comes as no surprise to anybody listening that the demand for data intensive processing and volumes of data is only increasing over time. Um, and that the compute systems, in particular NVIDIA GPUs, to support that new demand is also um, getting much more powerful year by year. Probably a little bit su more surprising exactly what's happened in the past few years. Uh, the first NVIDIA DGX system, the DGX1, um, was announced uh, just over two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago in 2020. Um, and now we are on the fourth generation, the H100s. And in that time, the you know, total performance of the system has increased by around a factor of 30. So that's great in terms of compute performance. And the network performance has also kept uh, track during that time as well, um, with very large uh, multiple networks going into those DGX systems, those H100s. Um, so one note before we move on. This denser compute package with higher performance and GPUs that can essentially change the ratio of compute time to I.O. Um, means that it's ever more important to, to work with a file system, a storage um, architecture that makes that data path work. Between storage and application, you really need ever more to push as much data as possible into those applications to be successful. And let's look at that demand part. So why is there bigger demand? And just to articulate that a little bit, I want to talk about autonomous driving and continue with that use case we've talked about with Deloitte um, and why there is demand for more data, where exactly that's coming from. And it's coming from more than one source. Uh, if we think about the, like the leading autonomous driving vehicles, and we look inside those vehicles, we see the expansion of the data there, the data requirements at the back end is evident. So firstly, if we look at the neural networks themselves, they're getting bigger. They're being trained on much, much more data. And that's important because, particularly with autonomous driving, but of course with everything, reducing the, um, the risk of misidentification of an object in AI is of paramount importance. So when a vehicle, you know, when you're looking at a real-time um, image identification inside a vehicle, you're going to see those boxes around people and signs, and there's going to be a probability associated with the identification of that object. We need to get that to 100% or as close to that as possible because the decision-making engines that take in that data really can't deal with low-probability things. It's very difficult for those decision-making engines that are controlling a vehicle to deal with percentages which are let's say, significantly lower than 97%. Um, so it's very important, and that's why the neural networks are getting bigger and they're being trained with more and more data and many, many more parameters involved. Um, but then also, if we look at the ingest stream from a single camera in a vehicle, today, um, partially supported by new capabilities in GPU performance, um, we're seeing more than one neural network attached to each camera. 
Um, so these neural networks are working in tandem, and each one of these networks has been trained for a particular kind of function or environment. Some might be specialist in junctions and junction environments and understanding those, or different regions. Um, some might be better in rural areas. Or it might be that some neural networks are better at coping and predicting um, with dynamic movements, with things that are moving in, in the frame and understanding what happens when, let's say, a car disappears behind a bus or a lorry or something like that. And then some other models might be better at static. So now, even for a single camera stream, we're seeing many, many, many neural networks running in TAM, many, many, many neurals where there used to be one neural network, now there might be several, and that just means more and more data at the back end to make those models um, act correctly for that particular function. Um, so we get a proliferation of these networks, and of course that drives more data. And then what's more, sort of thirdly, if you like, um, it's been estimated for this to train a car, it's going to take 11 billion miles of video, um, image, LIDAR, radar data. And to make that practical, rather than driving a car around, then we're doing that um, in data centers. We're creating um, new videos um, using existing data so that we can retrain and train up these models using simulated data as well as the real data coming from, from real, ve real vehicles. We can drive tens, hundreds of thousands of miles um, much more cost-effectively in an AI data center compared with using real vehicles. So just to finish, we do see a, a very rapid expansion from today, which you know, we've already seen three, four years of really dramatic growth in AI. And we see that continuing and even accelerating over the next few years. Um, back in 2020, Gartner predicted that 85% of CIOs uh, will be piloting AI programs, which is, of course, a huge investment in AI uh, across all industries. On the other hand, they also um, made the point that over 50% of those data science and AI projects never get deployed. And the top three inhibitors uh, were the ones that related to uh, the ones I mentioned earlier on. It's trust, uh, security of data, and model outcomes. It's two, time to implementation from proof of concept into real efficient production. And then thirdly, integration, de of data so that we can have a basically a single system on which to build our training, uh, build our auditing and governance uh, on top of that and get the data ingested with speed. All of which DDN are here to help with. And hopefully in this presentation we've explained not only what we've done, but how we've deployed that in different customer environments, including in NVIDIA's Selene. If you'd like to hear more, we'd very much like to hear from you. Um, please go to ddn.com and there you'll find our reference architectures uh, which we've developed in conjunction with NVIDIA to help our customers see how to deploy these systems, what it takes and what the resulting performance will be and the scales you can achieve. Um, and go and click on our ddn.com and you'll click to speak to a storage specialist. We'd be very, very pleased to go into some more detail about your specific use case. We have Superpods running in industries from healthcare to life sciences to academic research, urban, urban planning, autonomous driving, you name it. And we've had, had experience there at scale in deploying AI solutions in conjunction with NVIDIA. So please do uh, click on talk to a storage specialist on ddn.com and we'd love to speak to you in more detail. Thank you very much for listening. Um, hope to speak to you all soon.